And so I'm excited to announce uh, this month's new premier member. Uh, and leading the charge with our nine years in FinOps talk is uh, Aptio Cloudability. They recently moved up to the premier level to double down on investment in this community. Uh, and very excited to be joining, uh, be joined by two folks, uh, Eugene Kvostov, who recently joined our board, um, who's head of product engineering there for the cloud products, uh, and also Jason Fuller, who's really the star of the show. Uh, I think he's a long-term customer of theirs. And Jason, I hope you're on the line. We didn't double check. I think you've been in this longer than anybody else I know. I first talked to you in 2012. You called me out of the blue. I was in Texas and you were like starting a cloud practice and trying to figure out how to allocate the costs. Are you, are you there? Did you join us? Yep. Yeah, awesome. I'm here. No, You're thank welcome. you, Jerry. It's been a long time. Yeah, you too. I, I want to highlight before I pass it to you guys also, Jason got in on this cloud thing early. Like, look at this, look at this resume. 2011, head of cloud service delivery. He's been on the customer advisory board in AWS since 2016. So excited to have you here. And uh, Eugene, I mean, before you, I know you were at Aptio, you were building all this stuff at AWS. So why don't you gentlemen take a minute to introduce yourselves and let's hear the story. Absolutely. Thanks, Chair. I'll let Eugene go first. He's got he's got the um, the ad uh, for today. He's he's, uh, he's come prepared for Aptio. Yeah, as prepared as I can be. Thanks, Jr. Thanks, Jason. Uh, and thanks, everybody, for listening to us for a few minutes here. As Jr. mentioned, uh, I'm very excited to join the call today and be joined by Jason. Uh, he's certainly well positioned to share his learnings and advice with the group. I won't go through all of uh, his experience in accolades. I'm sure he'll do that himself in a bit. Uh, but real quick, little background on myself for those that don't know me, although I do know many of you. I joined Appio in late 2019, uh, actually following the acquisition of Cloudability. Uh, after spending a little over three years at AWS, building the uh, cloud cost management tools there, that's actually where I first met Jason. If you ever want to be on a hot seat, uh, talk to Jason when you discover, or he discovers a bug in the cost and usage report. It's impacting his ability to do his job. So uh, that was a really exciting time. Uh, moved over to Aptio and then shortly thereafter joined the FinOps Technical Advisory Council. And most recently, as Jerry mentioned, now excited to uh, join the governing board uh, and really engage deeper with this community as myself and my team continue to, to build out and innovate through the cloudability uh, suite of products. Uh, really guided by that pursuit to simplify cloud cost management and allow you to put FinOps into practice uh, much faster and much easier. And um, like Jason, and I know his team has the same commitment, we're really excited to uh, extend our commitment here to the foundation. But uh, enough about me, let's get to the main attraction here. Uh, Jason, it, it's good to be sharing the stage with you again, at least virtually for now. Um, in addition to kind of giving a quick intro of yourself, I'd love to start at the beginning of your FinOps journey, which has gone on the better part of a decade here. Uh, you've talked a lot about uh, the phases, right, the framework of crawling, walking, and running as a useful way to approach FinOps, right? You can't just kind of get started and fly right away. But what are some of those tactics and processes and really strategies that you and your team use uh, to start crawling? Yeah, I appreciate that. And, and um, you know, I, I feel like I'm amongst friends, you know, 367 people here in the participants list because I'm like my college professor who kind of looked at me sideways when I said, I want to do a, a, a double major in economics and computer science. Um, everyone here gets it, right? It, it, it comes down to that, you know, that level of technical know-how as well as that level of kind of simple supply and demand. So, you know, I think um, the walk uh, is important, you know, no pun intended. You know, you have to crawl, then you walk, then you run, uh, but it is a journey. And I think for a lot of companies, who are starting in cloud today, it's kind of, okay, you're all at the starting line. What are you going to do today? And I mean, the data and the tools and the abilities of everybody in 2021 are so much better having FinOps Foundation around to, to help with training, help with understanding, having partners like FTO around to help with tooling. Um, these didn't exist 10 years ago. You know, we're using Firefox plugins to look at our cloud view because Amazon didn't have a console yet. Um, and so I think... My, my crawling phase was really about um, data and data architecture. Um, and so every company that I've worked with, every group, you know, whether it's a full-time job or a, a, um, you know, a, a gig on the side, it's, it's about talking about your kind of who's who in the organization. So I always look for who in finance uh, joins and, and speaks out and uh, even calling them out at shows like reInvent, where only two guys out of a few thousand raised their hand, uh, very daring individuals who show up at that tech show. 
uh, or who in the technology um, sector actually understands, you know, monthly reporting, um, you know, and things like uh, you say things like paid in arrears and they don't, uh, they don't giggle, you know, so um, you have to find those folks because that that's the synergy. No, no, um, no doubt about it. So we look for that and then we, we build off of that from, from common language. Right. And so I think the Finos foundation is great in creating that, that footprint, that foundation that you work with, but for a long time, it was about explaining a, a micro reservation or a macro economic uh, or a global, you know, thing. At least, and cloud does that to us because it's absolutely the worst technical term for a, a movement uh, of any so far. Um, <laughs> cloud is looking like the picture I have here on the right. So, um, but it comes back to data, Eugene, for sure. That's that's probably the first thing. Locate the data, locate the people who understand the data, and then and then work up from there. Got it. Now that that makes sense, and there's a lot of data to be had, right? And we try to stress those similar tactics uh, with this community and with our customers, right? And working through tags, but also things that you can tag and normalizing your uh, billing data and some of the apples to apples stuff you talked about. Um, in the past, you've also mentioned kind of reading off one sheet of music, right? And I thought that's a really great framework to look at it. Um, and a great foundation to build. But how do you build off of that foundation? How do you get to the walk phase, quote unquote, and start operating and optimizing uh, your cloud costs and doing so for maximum efficiency? Yeah, I think the, the biggest thing when you're... Uh, someone's got a phone call, he's going to answer. <laughs> I think when you're dealing with a, um, a, a situation like moving from the crawl to the walk phase, you do have to start singing off that single sheet of music. So look, it's, it's not a, a new concept, a, a simple two by two on a whiteboard that says, what are the things that are gonna be low time, but high impact? Um, and, and we even in the run phase where we are at Here Technologies, we're still doing these conversations. I came from a meeting just this morning with our chief data officer, talking to her about how is the data ingest across the global cloud footprint, across the global cloud estate, um, impacting our bottom line, right? Where can we optimize and tune? And as companies start to move into 2021, the, the way we end up in the, in the state that we're in, it, things like GDPR, CCPA, SOC 2, HeadRamp, HIPAA, you know, every company is looking to make sure there's a third party signing their, their uh, we're doing it right card. And, you know, that leads to, to, down the hill, if you think of it like the snowball effect, it lands squarely on the on the feet of the technologists and the FinOps folks are there to help tell the story. So you gotta start telling that story there, Eugene. So like looking here, um, we, we took from a, an approach of 2016, 2017 timeframe, you know, it was right around when I joined Here Technologies. Here Technologies is a giant um, cloud partner uh, we have a lot of, of um, well, we have a lot of everything. Let's put it that way. Um, we're in the AWS technology community of top 100 cust customers. We work with, with pretty much anybody because ultimately we're about location. So location isn't necessarily a cloud supplier or a region or a, a country. It's, it's, you know, centimeter accurate uh, millisecond response of, of a of a platform that enables things like your car to drive automatically. So we have a very high tech product line, but very, very smart people who are writing algorithms for looking around corners and things like this. Um, you have to be able to balance this in your walk approach. So when we showed up and said, look, you have a lot of stuff in AWS. You have a lot of stuff in these other cloud suppliers. How are you handling that at a fleet level? You know, you get a lot of head scratching, people going, well, they, you know, my, my silo does this, their silo does that, we never mix. And the truth is there's a common denominator across that. So once you determine who the right finance person who speaks geek and who the right technologist is that speaks finance, and you get them in a room and start talking about how we start the quick wins to save the company money, you start to build a reputation of somebody who can, you know, visualize beyond the boundary. And so when you start doing this sort of increasing of function, you have to continue to engage both sides. Uh, just yesterday, I was told you're not in finance and you're not in architecture. So I don't know why I have to talk to you. Uh, you have to talk to me because I show the CEO the data that says your, your group is not you know, spending money appropriately. So there is a little bit of con you know, 
contention there that can occur and building a good solid FinOps practice inside of your organization means you have to be willing to uh, stand next to the bad as much as stand next to the good. So we institute KPIs. We look at things that, that drive corporate alignment. Yeah, we're going to keep 85% of what I call here micro commitments. These are basically fast follow architectural um, decisions that we take out of the hands of the engineers and we do on behalf of the company. We institute things like service control policies in AWS or RBAC policies in Azure uh, or blueprints in Azure that give us the ability to lock, you know, the catalog, right? Don't, don't let these be purchased willy nilly, even though it could be fast and free. Finance works on months, quarters, years. They don't work on microseconds, milliseconds, and second long billing files, right? So you have to balance some of the common denominator approach when you're in the walk phase, um, but really enhance your automation and technology. Yeah, you have to make investments. You have to show savings to get the money to make investments, you know, then go find the low hanging fruit you can do with an Excel sheet and a couple of people uh, in, that have the right control, the right administrative level inside the company make that money appear in the, in the right way. And then they will support you, you know, as you go forward in this journey. But I know Eugene, you have a great, you know, from an Aptio perspective, you also have tooling providers like Aptio who are going to give you a lot more of the, you know, prescriptive step-by-step and you take a FinOps foundation training, you take a cloudability or Aptio um, standard operating uh, onboarding, and you've almost, given yourself the, the catalyst to get through the crawl and the walk phase once your organization is settled inside of your company. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thanks for sharing that. I know identifying optimization savings opportunities, turning off vital resources, identifying anomalies, finding the right commitment-based programs. Those are things I get asked about a lot. Uh, so it's good to, to hear you dive into those. I often get asked how to save more money on cloud and while that's good and great, of course you want to save money, my response, and I think you share the sentiment is it's not necessarily about just spending less money, but spending the right amount of money for your business, your different business units, products, teams, however you organize it. You need to put those cloud costs and the savings opportunities into the context of your objectives, right? So uh, I know you talked a little bit about how your team have been successful in that regard. And you started to talk about uh, automating a lot of those processes, which is what I, I whenever I've first spoken to you and your team, I've always found fascinating, right? The ability to uh, really do this on an event-driven or an automated basis so that you almost allow things to run themselves. Uh, talk a little bit about that and how that's allowed you to evolve to the run or in your case, maybe even sprint or fly uh, phase and realize those benefits and also how you share those in the context of your business. Sherry just mentioned, right? Being able to uh, talk across finance and tech rather than directly to execs, but then also getting that exact buy and love to hear more about that. I know the group would as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like once you've established the team and you've had, uh, you know, like, let's say the first year inside the practice, you know, you kind of give yourself that first year to challenge some of the status quo, challenge some of the engineering practices, depending on if you're coming into this cloud thing for, you know, like I did at here technologies where it was well-established or where I did at, at Pegasystems where it was, you know, the cloud itself was brand new. Um, it depends on, on kind of where your company is, but in, in that first year, you're going to want to lock down, you know, like I said, the organization and gather the tooling and make a, a little bit of a wave, right? Not a big splash, but here's what I'm doing. Like anything in the technology world today, where you can take uh, a practice, do it on pen and paper, move it on to technology, move it to automation, you know, it just enables you to keep the team size fairly small. You know, the last thing you want to do is replicate, say, the old IT model of, you know, parallel growth of cost centers against uh, revenue generating product. You want to be seen as, as someone in product who helps with building things that help the product teams move faster. So locate some of those things in the product group that they say, oh, yeah, we're, we're scheduling the, the uh, I'll use a very geeky example, but we're scheduling the GP2 to GP3 migration of EBS volumes um, in Q3 2020, you know, two. Well, guys, I can do it, you know, before the end of October. So why don't you let my DevOps team handle that? But um, it's about access. And so having trust within your organization is super, super important. I live inside of the IT and trust organization, actually, with our FinOps practice. I don't live in the engineering or under the CTO. And so I work closely with our, our folks in security, work very closely with our folks in GRAC. 
but everybody works in different, you know, FinOps is in a different place depending on where you are. Some folks I've talked to, it's in their finance work. Some folks it's in their, their um, deeper engineering org. It all depends on, on where the company sees that value uh, proposition that you're posting. But once you've got the right um, technical people working for you, and, and for example, people always ask, well, how big is your team? Uh, my team's no more than three DevOps engineers with a lead. So four, four techno technologists, right? And it hasn't grown past four in uh, five and a half years. Because what we do is we establish, you know, what's going to happen. And then it's more about communication, engagement. I tend to do a lot of dog and pony shows, you know, leader of the FinOps world has to, you know, be out there. I don't get to touch the keys anymore. But some of the automation things we've done, um, we pull data out of CloudAbility, we review it on a per hour basis, and we make judgment calls using an algorithm we wrote. This is an example here. Thank you. So from left to right at the top, we're actually just taking this out. Now, the reason we're taking this out of CloudAbility rather than doing in CloudAbility is I think CloudAbility, just like AWS or Azure or, or um, you know, Google, you have a, a kind of all development or all possible scenario approach to some of this where we have very specific um, use cases. So we have situations where we're putting the entire uh, map on memory you know, for millisecond response in some of our service layer. So depending on your product, how transactional your product is, your costs will be different, but your actions need to be different too. So if I'm going to take data and go to an engineering team and say, once a day, you're underutilizing this instance, I want you to change it. They're going to say, you, you measured me at the wrong hour. So we measure constantly. And we created this serverless environment because we obviously can't spend money to save money. Yeah, we do spend money, but we have to spend it in the right places. This environment costs me single digit dollars per year to run. This Aurora database is now serverless, has been running for over three years, has a track of every single instance, every single RDS instance as well that we've ever said is out of band for its compute memory and its IO. I know exactly what's happening in that. And I know via the JIRA tickets we're sending out, whether they're taking action or not. So some will say, well, this looks a lot like the right sizing JIRA connection that CloudAbility has. It does. It was done before that was really live for us. Um, we were doing this in the quiet phase. And, you know, ultimately, it's about then showing CloudAbility, showing your third party tooling, helping them along. You know, as Eugene said, we've had many good conversations, but firm conversations about what the data structure needs to look like and how the data needs to come in. And I think it does promote collaboration in the industry. But you know, ultimately to move fast, you, you have to build these things, but it comes with good process, good, good engagement and trust first, technology second. Yes, and we, we do listen to our customers. <laughs> so thank you for that. Yeah, you do. Um, in addition to, well, actually uh, Joe Daly challenged me to keep you on time. So uh, <laughs> I'm gonna try to do that. I have just one more question. So uh, I'm sure you'll be in high demand after this chat and folks know how to reach you, but. Uh, where do you really see FinOps going next uh, in 30 seconds or less? 15 seconds. 15 seconds. If FinOps is all about the data sharing and data visualization and cross-charging, and I would call those all defensive postures, FinOps goes into the offensive next. You start to get given permission to take action much deeper, you know, deleting data, removing things. I mean, yes, we do some of that now, but we do it very kind of safely. I think we become first class citizens within the organization and you, you become like a security team where you're doing the FinOps thing and the security thing first. Uh, people in our organization are looking at cost increases by release. Yep. So you start to get really deep into that world of the CDCI, you know, uh, in, in the FinOps when you're flying. Fantastic. So if, if Thanks, anybody everybody. wants to dig in more with Jason, uh, he, he, like literally you can talk to this guy for hours. He'll go super deep. Uh, he's in a breakout afterwards. That, was, that wasn't a jab, Jason. I, I mean it. Uh, he's in a breakout afterwards to share more stories and talk. So please join uh, Eugene, any final words from your end? No, I mean, thank you all very much for listening. Thank you for sharing, Jason. And the last kind of plug I'll make is I'm sure I'll see many of you in reInvent come visit us at the Appio booth, come to the breakout session. I'm going to be lucky enough to share this stage with Ashley and Jen. Uh, talk about FinOps, talk about some of the new products we have like Cloudability SaaS and Cloudability Total Cost. So I'd be excited to see you there.